One village morning, 24 hours, zero heartburn. Live from America's news headquarters, I'm Harris Faulkner. New threats from North Korea, including a declaration today of a, quote, state of war with South Korea. The White House taking the threat seriously, it says, and ready to defend our allies. But adding the Communist North statement continues a long pattern of bellicose rhetoric. Regional tensions brewing since North Korea test-fired a rocket in December and then an underground nuclear test last month. In Tulsa, Oklahoma, long lines outside the health department. Thousands of people beginning to get tested for deadly diseases, all of them patients of one man, an oral surgeon. He's accused of performing medical procedures in unsanitary offices. Now the testing for HIV and hepatitis. Letters going to 7,000 people who went to Dr. Wayne Scott Harrington in the past six years. There's a 17-count complaint against Harrington. The investigation began after one patient tested positive for hep C. I'm Harris Faulkner. Now in about three seconds, we'll go straight back to Huckabee. Have a good night. He says he loves Jesus, but he hates religion. Now his YouTube videos have received more than 40 million hits, and it all started with a controversial message. I mean, if religion is so great, why has it started so many wars? Why does it build huge churches, but fails to feed the poor? Tell single moms God doesn't love them if they've ever had a divorce, but in the Old Testament, God actually calls religious people whores. Jeff Bethke stopped by recently to talk about authentic faith. <sighs> Jeff, good to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. you know, some people uh, probably look at you and, and think of you as a modern-day prophet like Jeremiah, who's calling out the religious people uh, for their own sins. Mm -hmm. How do you see yourself in your role? Um, to me, I just see someone who I just, I love Jesus, and I'm really just infatuated with his grace. Um, and I think sometimes we can add a lot of layers on top of him that then completely mute and completely muffle how awesome and beautiful he is. And so I just try to use my gift and what I like to do and just try to say, hey, can we peel some of those scales back and see who he, who he really is? You know, you, you're getting at the heart of what mm -hmm. faith really is, and sometimes yeah. people tend to even equate faith yeah. with things that are very earthly and temporal. Yeah. Uh, one of the shots you took was at people who make politics mm -hmm. equal to Jesus. Let's watch this one. What if I told you voting Republican really wasn't his mission? What if I told you Republican doesn't automatically mean Christian, and just because you call some people blind doesn't automatically give you vision? So what? You mean Jesus wasn't a Republican? He didn't ride the elephant down the streets of Jerusalem? Did I, I miss something there? I know. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I obviously caught some flack for that line. Um, but more than anything, that was more an idolatry statement than a political statement. And so um, I could have maybe framed a little bit better, but m my whole point with that line is um, there's many things that the Bible says are good, you know, money, sex, politics, et cetera. And it's, but when we make those good things ultimate things, then they become bad things. And so all I was saying with that line is, hey, can we make sure that we're not elevating politics as the ultimate? We're not getting our worth from it, our satisfaction from it. Um, but our identity is actually put in Jesus and what he's done for us. Because the truth is, you can tell whether you've made an idol of something based upon whether or not you demonize the opposite people of you. And so when something, you can disagree with people, but the minute you idolize something, then you're going to demonize the opposite. I think that happens with politics. Rather than saying, hey, I disagree with you, but let's dialogue, let's chat, let's engage truth and pursue truth. Instead, if we worship and elevate politics more than they should be, then we demonize that other side and say they're actually the root of evil, they're actually the root of the problem, and I think sometimes that's unhealthy. Okay, I'm going to tell you something. I don't want the audience or anyone back home to listen, because this is just between us. Yeah. I think you're absolutely right, mm. and I do think that the fact is a lot of people elevate politics yeah. way beyond where it should. Yeah. A hundred years from now, you know, I won't still be a Republican. Mm -hmm. I still will be a believer. Exactly. And that exactly. is what I do understand. And yeah. I, I, I get it. I yeah. totally get what you're saying. Here's another message that you have, uh, getting a, a message that we want to see what you think about. Now, I ain't judging. I'm just saying, for putting on a fake look. Because there's a problem if people only know that you're a Christian by your Facebook. That's a good one. Don't put on a fake look because yeah. people don't want to just know you by your Facebook. You're good. You can do it. <laughs> well, you can post the show, too, but you're not going to get to, okay? Uh, talk about the fact that people do sometimes put on this outward appearance yeah. in which everything is just lovely, but they're not lovely inside. Yeah. Um, 
I think specifically the passage where Jesus addresses in, um, in the Gospels where he says, you know, the Pharisees, there will be a group of people who everyone else thinks speaks for God, and the outside of their cup will be amazing and shiny and beautiful, but the inside's filthy. Um, and the Old Testament, God makes it very clear that he's not after external behavior. He's after a heart that loves him, pursues him, desires him, and has been transformed by him. Well, you talk about the, the fact that there's a conflict between Jesus and religion. Mm -hmm. By religion... How do you define that? I mean, should we not go to church? Yeah, yeah. So in my, my northwest context, Seattle, Portland, that kind of area, um, religion has become synonymous on the street for, you know, more the legalistic, self-righteous type of thing. So in no way was I saying church. In fact, I am a huge believer in church, and I love church, and I go to church. And on top of that, the church is more about, it's more an organism. It's more about the body of Christ and the bride of Christ. And so... Um, yeah, I never want people to take it that way because then uh, I never want to believe that I talk badly about Christ's wife because I don't think it's going to go well for me if I'm doing that to, to you know? <laughs> So Probably will say. Are you shocked by the reaction? I mean, 22 million views. Yeah. My gosh, man. Yeah. Uh, there are some rock stars out there that would like to have 22 million people <laughs> yeah. know who they are, for heaven's mm -hmm. sakes. All right, Jeff says he didn't always know Jesus or talk about him uh, or make you feel bad about what he said. I'm going to ask him how he found Jesus when we come back. Stay with us.